Hi, John Garfield. Going from servant to son. I don't know if you, how many of you have been uh, like in leadership or management positions. I, I was uh, not bragging, don't get me wrong. I'm not some world beater leader. <laughs> but I was a manager for a bunch of really good engineers for like 11, 12 years. And I pastored a couple of churches for 13 years that uh, and had people to lead there. And I know other managers and other pastors, but both in the business realm and the uh, you know church realm. What leaders are looking for is people that understand you know the purpose, the uh, the vision, and can take initiative to make it happen. Managers are not looking for people that want to be told what to do at a detailed level. <laughs> Those people are not helpful. <laughs> God is the same way. He's looking for sons, not servants. The, the God we serve isn't, uh, isn't shopping around for servants. He's, a, he's not the king of servants. He's the king of kings. So our Father isn't looking for compliant submission from servants. His heart is longing for a collaborative creativity with sons. He treasures two things. Number one, sons who are conversant and conversational about his purpose. And number two, sons who can creatively initiate its implementation on earth. Sons know their Father's business and they do it from the heart, not the letter. They don't wait to be told what to do. They don't operate out of just being told exactly what to do. Uh, not that they can't, it's just that's not the, you know, the relational space they're coming from or what they're even, or even what the Father wants. <laughs> John 15, 15, I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Hello? Instead, I've called you friends for everything that I learned from my Father I've made known to you. Father wants you to know his purposes. He wants you to know his kingdom initiatives. First, 2 Corinthians 3, 5. Now we are not that we are competent in ourselves to claim anything for ourselves, but our competence comes from God. He has made us competent as ministers of the new covenant, not of the letter, but of the spirit. For the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. So we go from, and I'm not, you know, like throwing the baby out with the bathwater <laughs> because we go from being unsaved. There's a great graphic in the new newsletter that explains this. We go from being unsaved, having the wrong father, <laughs> being just like the wrong father, <laughs> to being servants of God who are saved. And, and we, when we're first saved, we're looking for other people to show us how this whole thing works. So we're under principles, we're under tutors and governors and and um, Jesus said, take my yoke upon you. My, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. And, and even slaves is an appropriate term. Paul called himself a bond slave. Uh, so obedience is the, you know, a starting place for our relationship, but it doesn't end there. It, it, the, the place we're trying to disciple people to is sonship, not servanthood. And um, I, I just want to suggest that servant leaders do produce something. They produce servants. That is not the goal. The Father is looking for sons. And I, I want to suggest that area of being in His presence, having access to uh, the council, bearing fruit, that's the realm of sons. And like, just like Jesus, they, they have initiative. That's their trademark. Um, so servants are schooled to be better servants. Sons are fathered to be themselves, to be valiant ones, to be heroic, to be uh, those who do exploits. So the confusion comes from the reality. That we all start out as servants. There's, it's not wrong to you know, preach servanthood. I'm not against that. I'm just saying that's not the end game. We love God and we want to do the right thing, but we don't trust ourselves in the beginning. We are under the watchful care of shepherds, and we sheep learn to hear his voice. <laughs> and the point is that we outgrow being told what to do by other men. Um, we we that, that, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater in that one either. <laughs> There's always a place for collaboration, for counsel, for uh, oversight, for uh, getting balance from other people. So the day eventually comes when we hear the Father's voice and we begin to flow with it to inherit our identity and our land. You can't get either one of those things from uh, a father on earth. Jesus said, or, um, 
Proverbs, Hebrews, call, mo, call no man on earth your father. I think Jesus said that. I should have looked it up. <laughs> Galatians 4.1. Now I say that as long as the heir is a child, he does not differ at all from a slave, although he is owner of everything, but he is under guardians and managers until the date set by the father. So I'm, I'm just letting you know that uh, all of us have a date. We Our servanthood expires. <laughs> <laughs> he wants us to be sons, not servants. So um, one of the, a couple of interesting definitions, one's obedience. Even the language of obedience and righteousness is confused. Obedience throughout the Bible always carries the first implication of hearing our Father. Old Testament and New Testament, look it up yourself. It means hearing, not just doing something you're told. Sons very naturally respond to the prophetic voice of their father. So co-laboring is more accurate than the concept of obedience. Have you ever heard a drill sergeant that has trouble being heard? No, that's obedience. But the father, um, he wants something different. He wants something from the heart. So servants rely on others to hear God for them and offer up a version of compliance to the letter of what they hear from other men. That form of obedience is never sustainable over a lifetime. The letter eventually kills motivation. It doesn't connect with our hearts. Uh, even righteousness doesn't mean what we think it does. We usually think of righteousness as being in good standing with God via our obedience, <laughs> like we earn it. Um, so diakosone, uh, it's Greek uh, 1343, means equity of character or act. Get that? Equity of care. Equity with who? With our Father. Isn't that amazing? that's what it means. <laughs> so in modern vernacular, righteousness is being on the same page of purpose with our Father. Yes, we do what He's doing, but obedience isn't the bridge to righteousness. It starts with hearing the purpose in His heart and co-laboring. Um, so servants and slaves do uh, what they themselves don't want to do. That, that's another key difference. That's the definition of religion. Sons connect with what their father has written on their hearts and cooperate with their own will and their own identity in addition to what's in their father's heart. They are doing what they love from the heart. They have great authority because they know their initiative also resides in their father's heart. Sons can ask whatsoever. I've given you in the blog six different references for that in John 14, 15, and 16. Uh, they can even forgive whomsoever, John 20, verse 21. He breathed on his disciples and says, Whomsoever you forgive shall be forgiven. <laughs> Our concepts of obedience and righteousness don't normally allow such levels of inis initiative as asking what for whatsoever and forgiving whomsoever. I, that's like beyond servants. <laughs> so um, beyond obedience is a good concept. Sons offer something the Father treasures much more than ticking off a list of instructions, compliance, or intellectually knowing all the principles, the recipes. Sons know their Father's heart and they have experienced the key ingredients of the kingdom, their Father's love for people. Now listen to John uh, 14 through 17. You are my friends if you do what I command you. Okay. Look that word command up in the Greek. It's much softer than it sounds. No longer do I call you slaves, for the slave does not know his master's business. Um, <clears throat> but I have called you friends, for the, all the things that I've heard from my Father I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you would go and bear fruit, <clears throat> and that your fruit would remain, so that whatsoever you ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. This is what I command you, love one another. So this idea of do what I command is used twice in those few verses, and it means enjoin, as in the sense of invitation from the Father to those who can hear his voice. It's an invitation. It's not a, really a command. English doesn't you know, cover the concept. The Greek word for command comes from telos, which alludes to the vision, telescope, which alludes to the vision in Father's heart that sons can see and share. So we're doing things with the Father because they're also in our hearts. That translation, that means they're fun <laughs> and that we have the power and we're good at it. Uh, so the trademark of sons is that they carry their Father's heart. They don't operate out of a shopping list of instructions or a recipe book full of principles. <laughs> they go to the council and see for themselves what the Father is doing. 
They delight in bringing that purpose to earth and doing even greater works. That's initiative. Uh, it's that simple. The living word is abiding in them. and The Father's purpose flows from their bellies like rivers of living water. They are living epistles that bring the written word to life, bring his prophetic word to life. Well, all they do is uh, hear the Father and say the same thing. They blow the trumpet of the sound they hear in heaven. They live by every word that proceeds from their Father's heart. It feels much more like freedom than sacrifice. Life in the kingdom of God is not a discipline that requires accountability. It's a jailbreak from the letter of the law and the drudgery of servanthood and slavery that sons run toward. It, uh, it's not religion. Uh, it's, it's a jailbreak <laughs> to freedom. <laughs> Their testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. That's from Revelations 19.10. And their words are living and powerful, and they love to set captives free just like their father. So 2 Corinthians 3.17, Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we who with unveiled faces all reflect the Lord's glory are being transformed into His likeness with ever-increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is that Spirit. Okay? Psalm 84, they go from strength to strength. Every one of them appears before God in Zion. So how does this all work? Sons are the ones that are in the council, seeing what the Father's doing, hearing His voice, just bringing it back to earth. Um, so what about you? The purpose of heaven for each of us is already written in our hearts, and it can be heard in the council. Your business can shift from a Christian business full of servants to a kingdom business full of sons who have initiative and make a difference. We help people and businesses get their prophetic purpose in writing and make it happen on earth. Taste and see. I'm giving you some links in the blog. Um, I just want to encourage you that Father is uh, tipping tables over. <laughs> He's inviting servants to be sons. He's inviting you and I uh, to take our place in a reformation. There. He, he's doing some amazing things right now, and uh, it's, it's uh, happening on earth because sons are beginning to take up their place and fulfill uh, the calling and the election that, that God has chosen them for. It's a lot of fun. The water's fine. Come on in. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just release reformation over the United States, over Europe, over the world. And Father, we're releasing sons, we're releasing businessmen to enter your kingdom, to be your ambassadors, to be uh, the reflection of our Father in heaven, to bring heaven to earth in the, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Go get them. <laughs>